uh, give our global audience uh, a bit of an update on what your reforms, reform priorities are going into 2022. Where do you want to work on the most? Yes, yes. So thank you for having me. If you talk about um, tourism specifically, uh, one of our main targets is to double the domestic tourism level. UAE has traditionally been um, a target for international tourists, so we have 71% international tourists versus 29%. The global average is exactly opposite that. And that is why we've launched the campaign, The Coolest Winter, to try to focus on domestic tourism and to offset some of the lost incoming um, tourism from different source markets, as well as diversification. Uh, we have been opening as well new markets into the UAE. Uh, I mean, you are dealing with a rising number of COVID infections, the highest level now since about September. This is a, a global phenomenon and the world is dealing with it in very different ways. How concerned are you that that could be a stumbling block to some of your ambitious goals that you just laid out on the tourism side? I mean, look, if we look at the previous variants experience, uh, the UAE has proven it was a safe haven, if I should say, for tourists, because the number one priority for a tourist to travel abroad during these days is the safety level and the healthcare system in that country. And today, as we speak, the UAE has 100% of its target population receiving one dose and 91% fully vaccinated. So that gives tremendous uh, comfort to tourists to visit the UAE. And we've seen how that impacted the UAE. We even had a spillover effect on the real estate sector. While a lot of those who came to visit the UAE found it to be an open space where um, business goes as usual, uh, things are under control. Yes, there are me weekly meetings to look at the COVID level restrictions, but the country never went back into lockdown. And that tremendously helps the economy and makes us convergent to either real estate purchase, and we've seen an eight-year high in December in terms of transactions, of 7,000 transactions, and a four-year high in terms of volume uh, in, in May. So it really has proven, uh, if anything, it positions the UAE as a go-to destination during such waves, in my personal view. Uh, Minister, I want to get to some of the other components in your portfolio, and specifically around uh, entrepreneurships and SMEs. Uh, the conversations I've had with, with many in, in this portion of the economy, uh, you know, they're very satisfied with, with a lot of the, the landmark changes that have been completed over the last couple of years. Uh, one of the fronts where there is still an ongoing struggle is access to banks, not so much access to finance, but it's specifically opening a bank account. It takes a long time. And in many, in many cases, banks just aren't keen to do that to begin with. Uh, is there something for the new year that, uh, that could help uh, sort of resolve that point of tension? Yes, I think the, the, um, the issue with the banks is that a lot of um, effort goes into the KYC part. And as you know, the UAE is an international hub. And for these banks to have operating uh, and, and, and assets invested globally, they have to make sure that every single customer that comes into their system is fully KYC. And that takes tremendous effort from the banks. What we have done as government, uh, I'm also the vice chairman of Emirates Development Bank, we've launched a service where you could open up a bank account in as less as 48 hours. Now, the caveat in that is it's only a local currency and can only be used domestically, but we believe that's a good starting point for entrepreneurs. So today, effectively, you could actually start with that bank account with this, um, as fast as 48 hours. We're doing it with a fintech partner, YAP, and it has been proven to be extremely successful. We have done some tests and we've launched it about uh, a month and a half ago. And we truly believe that will resolve part of that issue. We still need to work with the banks on the KYC. And also bear in mind, the anti-money laundry uh, regulations is very strict and the UAE is abiding by that. And this period of the past six to nine months, there's a lot of focus on stronger KYCs, um, stronger diligence on customers. Yeah. Um, and we think that will also help um, get more inflow of investments into the country, knowing that the system in place right. is very thorough with a very thorough KYC. Minister, let's assume that uh, you know, a chillier scenario unfolds where COVID cases continue to rise. And let's say there are some level of new restrictions. Uh, would you be willing to extend or reintroduce some portions of the support programs that have been made available to SMEs and entrepreneurs to get them through uh, this period of uncertainty? So look on this one, um, I've been appointed back in July 2020, you know, in the midst of the pandemic. And I have regular meetings with entrepreneurs across the different sectors. The discussions I had back in 2020, let's say Q3, 
were points around can we get some more funding, can we get some more, you know, uh, stimulus uh, packages. But then when I met them again in Q1 of 2020, the conversations changed dramatically. Uh, enterprises were extremely happy that they were able to operate. Uh, and they told us specifically that they'd rather have their businesses open and continue to operate rather than be locked down, being paid, you know, paycheck protection plans. So I think the beauty or the biggest support an entrepreneur can get is actually the ability to be able to operate in a business in the midst of, you know, uncertainty in these uh, upcoming waves of the pandemic. Having said that, the central bank already announced a few days back an extension of the stimulus uh, package to um, the first half of 2022. So we want to give the confidence for entrepreneurs and investors alike that the stimulus package is there if required. However, our focus is to continue uh, doing business. Uh, if I look at tourism sector, yeah. for example, until Q3, we're up to 64% occupancy. We used to be 70%. So we're getting very close to pre-pandemic level. Even when it comes to revenue, we're at right. 20 billion, we used to be 24 billion. So we're almost 80 to 90% of pre-pandemic level. And that gives a lot of um, comfort to both uh, visitors as well as investors in the sector. Uh, what about uh, some of the corporate specific measures and uh, breakthroughs that you're aiming for? Uh, we understand uh, that there might be talks on the way with Binance about setting up a, 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 re a regional headquarters uh, out of uh, Dubai or Abu Dhabi, but either way, based out of the United Arab, Arab Emirates. Can you confirm that these talks have taken place? And then maybe broadly your thoughts on sort of positioning the country in, in crypto, which is controversial. I mean, you talk about KYC, you talk about regulation. Globally, that's a very sensitive subject. It is. I mean, look, the UAE has always been... Um cutting edge when it comes to new sectors. I think uh, cryptocurrency is here to stay. Um, uh, we've seen an increased uptake. As long as you are following the right regulation, there's no harm in um, adopting such technology or putting the regulation in place. Now, we talked about um, talks about making the UAE as a hub. There's, there's several talks. We've seen multinational firms right now willing to relocate to the UAE out of East Asia mostly because of the tougher restrictions, but also they've seen confidence in the UAE. We have been through you know, a healthcare and a financial um, crisis. We've never increased taxes. We've been stable. Um, the country hasn't gone into lockdown again. So that stability is something that a lot of these multinational companies look for, and UAE is, is, a, is a key hub for that. On crypto, um, again, we see um, a, a strong future in cryptocurrency. It's here to stay. Uh, we've seen a higher adoption. I think even the mayor of New York uh, took his first salary in cryptocurrency, right? So that's a good signal from regulators that we are adopting this technology. And Dubai has always been cutting edge. We had the first internet city, the first media city, and now yeah. we're moving into cryptocurrency. Minister, very briefly, uh, yes or no then on, on Binance? Uh, excuse me, I didn't have your question. Y yes or no on, on Binance opening a regional headquarters in, in the United Arab Emirates? I'd say stay tuned.